this video, we'll talk about the various modes of nutrition which are seen in case of bacteria. So, modes of nutrition. That means, how do these bacteria obtain their nourishment? We can classify these bacteria into two main categories on the basis of this mode. One which can synthesize their own nourishment or food are known as the autotrophs. And the ones which cannot synthesize their own food and obtain their nourishment from some other organisms, they are called the heterotrophs. Now the autotrophs, they can further be divided into two categories. Once which use sunlight as a source of energy, we will call them photoautotrophs. And the ones which obtain their energy by using some kind of a chemical, but they synthesize their own food, then they are known as chemoautotrophs. Let us talk about these two categories and then we will come to the types of heterotrophs. Auto, photo autotrophs means they are using the solar energy or sunlight. If they are able to absorb sunlight, that means they must be having a pigment. So these bacteria, they have pigments which can absorb the sunlight. Like in case of plants, chlorophyll is the pigment which absorbs sunlight. So here, the pigments are bacteriochlorophyll. And there is one more which is called bacteriovirulin. So these pigments are there. And these pigments, they absorb the solar energy. But there is a difference. In case of plants, what we say is that carbon dioxide, water, these two things are taken by the plants and they convert this into carbohydrate, that is glucose. So what we know is that carbon dioxide has to be reduced and the reducing power is obtained from hydrogen which is taken from water and that is why this when water splits oxygen is given out as a power product. So I am writing the reaction of photosynthesis in eukaryotes like plants like plants. So in plants, when photosynthesis takes place, what happens is carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, we get C6H12O6 and oxygen is given out as a byproduct. This photosynthesis is called oxygenic. This is called oxygenic because oxygen is evolved. In case of photoautotrophs, the reaction is slightly different. They also do the same thing, that means they also synthesize their own carbohydrate, but instead of water, some other substance is used as hydrogen donor. Substance which is used, I am going to write this reaction here, photosynthesis in bacteria. This was photosynthesis in plants. So this is oxygen. In case of bacteria, one part is going to remain the same. That is carbon dioxide which has to be reduced into carb carbohydrates. But the hydrogen donor is say H2S. Rest of the process is same. Here there is sunlight. The pigments that is bacteriochlorophyll and bacteriovirulin and C6 H12O6 are synthesized and the byproduct is sulfur, this one. That means here it is sulfur which is released, no oxygen. Such photosynthesis is known as an oxygenic. So in case of prokaryotes, though they are able to use sunlight, they have the pigments, but Oxygen is not given out as a byproduct, and that is why this photosynthesis is known as an oxygenic photosynthesis. So, if they are using sunlight to make their own food, this is the process which is seen in case of these bacteria. Now, let us come to chemoautotrophs. 
Chemoautotrophs are going to use some kind of chemicals to obtain their nourishment. The examples here are nitrifying bacteria. Nitrifying bacteria. These nitrifying bacteria, they actually convert ammonia into nitrites and then into nitrates and during this process they produce energy and that is the energy which they use. So nitrifying bacteria example can be nitrosomonas, nitrococcus, these are the bacteria. Iron bacteria can also be taken as the example of chemoautotroph. They are able to synthesize their own food but they are using some kind of chemical no solar energy and that is why they are known as chemoautotrophs. Now let us come to the heterotroph category that means they cannot synthesize their own food. They depend on some other organisms. So here one would be saprophytes that means they obtain their nourishment from dead and decaying organic matter and here we take the example of clostridium it helps in decomposition and it breaks that dead organic matter and that's how they obtain their energy next symbiotic mode in symbiotic both the one that is bacterium and the other organism with which this bacterium is symbiotic there is a mutual benefit to both the partners suppose we take the example of rhizobium here example is rhizobium rhizobium is found in symbiotic association with leguminous plants leguminous plants now association is mutually beneficial to both so rhizobium fixes nitrogen for the plant and the plant provides nourishment water shelter to the bacterium so bacterium is not uh, making its own nourishment on the contrary it is getting it from the other organism and the third under heterotroph is the parasitic mode of nourishment so this is symbiotic saprophytic and this is parasitic here the bacteria would live in the host and it would obtain its nourishment from the host body so in all these three cases bacteria are not producing their own food they are dependent on other organisms it could be dead and decaying organic matter it could be a plant or a similar organism and here it is a host which could be again a plant or animal and here if we have to take example we can take the example of all those disease causing bacteria like vibrio cholerae this is a disease causing bacteria so it is found in our body and cholerae see cholerae and because it is found in our body our body becomes the host and it reproduces there it obtains nourishment from our body so in these three cases the bacteria they are dependent on other organisms and in these two cases they are capable of synthesizing their own food but it could be using the solar energy sunlight or it could be through certain chemicals so these are the various modes of nutrition that we find in bacteria now in the next video we'll talk about the various modes of reproduction which are seen in case of bacteria.